So a little earlier today I made a video about how to adjust the chassis plate by just simply cutting off the two pegs at the front and uh, then you know positioning this so that it lines up in that wheel opening with that A from the you know the A arms there for the uh, Ford independent suspension. And that video went pretty good. People are watching it so far. And then I got some comments about, oh, well, you need to try this with the glass and the dashboard in. So what I did is I went through the kit parts. And as you can see, I put the glass in. Now I just have this in with tape because I'm not going to glue this into this plastic and then try to mask around the windows. You know, this is not a model airplane. <laughs> anyway, so what I've done here is I've taken the glass and I've put the lip right to, I guess, this flat edge here and then taped it back here. Now, uh, some people say there is some fit issues with the glass. It is back a little bit on the roof, but I do believe, you know, if you just manipulate it in and use a bit of tester's liquid glue, you know, when you're ready to do this, for serious, for real, that, uh, you know, with a little bit of holding it and, you know, kind of pushing against the glass, to the body that it might conform to that, not fully sure. The back glass, right where it was attached on the parts tree, there was a bit of distortion in there. So I've positioned this rear window so that the distortion is behind the window opening just in here. As you can see, I used a lot of this one quarter inch masking tape just to hold things in, which is this stuff here. Okay, so now people are suggesting that I put in the dashboard and that somehow by moving the chassis backward it threw out all the alignment between the window glass, the dashboard, and all kinds of crazy trouble. So here's the stock dashboard and I'm going to also try this with the NASCAR dashboard in a minute. Oh, let me just um, zoom in a little. I found that if I zoom in a little the camera focus will lock a little better. But if it's zoomed all the way out, it tries to uh, adjust it. Now I can see a little bit of an issue here because on the side of the dashboard you have this big rectangle and as you can see it's like a big notch right in there. Typical AMT of the 60s, right? And the dashboard pins are very slight. They're like half the thickness of the place that it's going to go into. So I could see maybe the dashboard might want to move forward and back a little bit, but it's not much. And the NASCAR version, I think it is a bit thicker in here. So when it's in, it's right in. You know, it's, it's not going back and forth with the two hand swing and all the way back to the center again. <laughs> little square dancing talk. All right, so. I'm going to put the interior in like this. Now, this is how I suggest you build this. Pretend that the seats and everything else are in here, the roll cage, whatever you want to put in there. This is the completed tub, and you're going to paint it and everything, really super detail it, throw that steering wheel in, the whole deal. You're going to have that as a separate piece. You're not gluing that to the chassis first, like that, and then trying to insert this with the chassis underneath. You're leaving that alone, okay? Uh, the glass you're going to glue in and pretend this is all painted and your in your headliner is painted and the whole deal, right? Okay. Got to use a little make-believe on this before I actually make the here's how to really build it video. So I've got the body this way. I'm going to just slide this in because if I turn it upside down, oh, look what happened. The dashboard fell out, okay? So I've been practicing this for the last couple of hours, trying to figure out what the issue is. Anyway, so here we go. Interior coming in. So now we got that dashboard trapped with the windshield. Now I can turn it upside down. It's not going to fall out. And you'll notice here, there's sort of like these little half circle things. Or full circle, pardon me. I'll just lift this up for a sec. And on the interior, you can see the half circles. So those go in on the back of the circles. <laughs> or however you want to... front of the circles? Okay, so here we are with the glass, the rear window, and the front window. Now, I don't know, there is a bit of a gap here, if you catch it at the right angle. 
where you can clearly see that the dashboard is not quite fully up against the glass. But this is typical for these kind of model kits. If you paint your dashboard flat black, you <laughs> and uh, in behind flat black, you won't really see that curve line in there. Sort of a gap. Oops. Now, I did ac accidentally slide that back. My apologies. But yeah, you can see there is a bit of a gap there. But, I mean, that's typical for the era of the model. So, Okay, so now I'm going to have that upside down. Now, pretend I put glue in, in here, in the back, along the sides, maybe up front somewhere too. And now this is all locked in as a unit. Or, But I'm not going to have any glue in there, so just keep that in mind too. Okay, so here is the underpan with the rear wheel backs in and the front of the wheel with the Goodyear Polyglass GT radials. This is what came in my kit. Now, there is an issue that I have noticed, and that is that the tire is actually narrower than the wheels themselves. So when I get the chance, I can take my sandpaper here and sand this down on the wheel itself and leave the wheel backs as they are. So that'll reduce a bit out of here, the thickness, and that'll bring the wheel closer to the wheel back. Because you can see here, it's almost, the entire wheel is almost right out of the tire. So it does need a little modification because if I push the tire to the back of the wheel back, you can see that the rim has popped out just a bit. So to keep that from popping out, we have to reduce the thickness of the wheel. But that's not really an issue that's going to affect what uh, everybody is saying the problem is. The problem they're saying is when I slide the chassis pan backwards with the pins cut off, somehow it affects the interior tub. It moves the firewall, which I can't understand because the firewall is actually molded in place to the body. So explain that one to me. <laughs> Uh, but at any rate, okay, wait, just gonna take the wheels off the wheel backs for a sec. Okay. Okay, so a little bit, you gotta move the sides out a little bit to get this thing to drop into the body. Okay, so here, there was the original position if I had the pins in because, oh, hang on. All right, something like that. So there's the pins in as it was originally, right? But I cut the pins off, so now I can align... Okay, get in there. can align that block up into the A posts. Okay, so that's what I was going for in that video. And now... I do believe Pete is right in a little area here because he moved the hole back. And if I line this up... You can still see that the wheel in the back is not completely dead center to the wheel arch. It is just a little bit ahead, so we'll give Pete some points there. I mean, it could go back, but at this stage, I mean, you have to drill a hole beside a hole, and that's not an easy task to do. So you have the choice to try to drill a hole beside a hole, or fill in the existing hole and still try to drill a hole beside a plugged hole. Or you could just, you know, make the compromise and say, okay, well, I'm not going to go any further than that. However, the front, with it being lined up, uh, the thing is, this uses a solid metal axle in the back, and it uses pins which you push from this side out into the front wheels. But that's no excuse. Oops, I lost my dashboard. So let's just wiggle the metal rear axle out temporarily. And we'll just slide this into one of the holes. Should be the same on the other side. Hang on. Do a little reconstruction work for a quick hot minute. Okay, dashboard, get back in. Sliding up through the back. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, clicking into place, making sure those little tabs are there. Okay, chassis pan. Chesapan, Sassafras. All right, and now, let's see which way to turn this. Okay, metal axle through here. Come on, line up. There we go. And now we got the wheel. The wheel, just like in Conan. Okay. Anyway, 
Okay, so from my best eyeballing here. So now there is the wheel with the metal axle, and you can see that the front wheel now is actually centered into that wheel arch. So that is the mission accomplished in the front. And remember, the back is just ahead a little tiny bit. So if you want to leave it like that, fine. But if not, you're going to have to plug this hole and then drill a hole right beside it. And that, that in itself is a complicated feat. Because the drill will want to go down into your new hole, and then all of a sudden it finds the old one and goes at an angle. Um, so that's why I try to avoid drilling a hole beside a hole. It's not my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> and I'm not good at trying to fix that. So at any rate. But that's not the issue. So um, the issue is that people are saying... Okay, hang on. Get this dashboard back into where it should be. Just to check that interior. Uh, Okay, what, what people are trying to say is when you slide the chassis pan back, it shifts everything and gets all this out of whack. And by uh, moving that back and everything being out of whack, nothing will ever align again. Okay, so now tell me if you see the dashboard move because I don't. Tell me if you see the interior sliding back, because I don't. I'm not understanding what the problem is, and I'm going pretty far. Look at this. And nothing in the interior is moving back or forth. Uh, well, it did there, though. <laughs> Probably because I'm squeezing this together. But yeah, so I, I'm not understanding this. Once you get it glued in place, it should stay. And... Let's throw the old NASCAR dashboard in there, because I tried it with this too, and I don't notice anything shifting out of proportion because I go back an eighth of an inch, or even a sixteenth, I don't know. Okay, so, so the NASCAR also looks like it's got a bit of a gap underneath here in the front, but... Okay, again, tell me if you see, okay, hang on, so let's just position this so we're there, okay, because you're not going to be sliding it back and forth, just take this little stick here, push the dashboard forward, just get a finger under here and see if I got the... Okay, yeah, so everything's all in there lining up, and I don't see what any issue is with moving this back a little. See, it's right there in position, and I don't see any issues. Dashboard being naughty here. <laughs> yeah. So I don't get it, guys. I don't understand. Here, like, well, let's try to lock this in with a bit of tape. And just see where we're at. Because, like, the interior bucket is positioned where it's supposed to be positioned. Oops, I think I just stuck my thumb through the rear window. <laughs> okay. Now well, let's go here. Maybe inside there we'll hold. And a little tape inside this side. Okay. All right. Okay, so now we got the dashboard in location. Oh. Boo! Okay. So, just going to drop the pan in where I think it should go. be there. So, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I simply do not know. Okay, hold on. 
think what I'll do is third time's a charm, right? Okay, just to make sure I didn't accidentally move anything. So there it is in position, and I still see the usual typical AMT gap there on the dashboard, but nothing else seems to have moved. Now, if you're wondering about the engine block, I did build this up a long time ago, just to this stage, because it needs paint. See, I didn't even scrape down the seam line. Now that hole goes into that pin right there. Boom. There's no problem with the engine crushing into the back of the firewall because I moved it back. It seems to be f basically fitting exactly where it needs to be in the real car. And because there's no, like the drive shaft and all that is molded in, this, really in essence right here, is a complete separate unit from the body and the interior. Provided that you glue this interior tub, just like I did with the tape here, with these little half moons into the backs of the circles here to block it in place. <laughs> and uh, then you just, you know, build up your chassis with the exhaust and everything separate. Build up your body with the interior and the glass in it like this. Slap the two together, put that in the right spot, glue it. None of this should move because it's all glued down solid. Bob's your uncle and there you are, mate! <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh, I don't understand where your problems are. I mean, if you... I could understand if you glued the interior to the chassis pan and then moved it back. Yes, that would slide everything back. Your uh, package shelf would be coming down about in here somewhere. But I don't get it. So if you guys can, you know, show me some evidence as to how yours moved out of the way and all the rest, I'd be really interested, you know, not to put you down or anything, but I'd be really interested to see how that, that kind of issue arose. Unless you, I don't know, if you built it following the instructions. But what do the instructions actually say about this? Okay, so here we go. We got our interior here. Build it stock or a drag rate or a NASCAR oval track, whatever you want to call it. Could be both, really. Uh, there's the the chassis for NASCAR top and upside down down below. All right, so we there. See, there's your body. You're gluing the glass in. Then you're gluing the interior assembled interior in there. And then, well, I suppose it's done this way. Sorry for the paper rustling. But right there, there's the body with the glued-in interior from the previous step. It's dropping right on the chassis pan. There's the pins which would be going into those holes, but we cut them off so we could move this back and get the wheels aligned. And like I say, I don't, I don't see what the problem is, because your interior is glued into your body. This is irrelevant down below uh, for positioning, so I don't get it. But um, check out Pete's channel. I think he's going to try to put the 66 Ford Fairlane undercarriage under here because it's better detailed, like separate front and rear axle and all that. But my fix here is just so if you're going directly out of directly out of the AMT Ford Cobra kit and you don't have any other kits and you're not into kit bashing or whatever and you just want to solve why the wheels are so far forward this is it <laughs> basically cut those pins off and slide the the chassis back and you should be fine but anyway I thank you all for watching the video and I thank the people that brought that issue up but like I say I I don't see it. <laughs> so if you can convince me otherwise, I'd appreciate that a lot. Photographs, your own YouTube video. Uh, well, because this is YouTube. I mean, it would be nice if YouTube had like a Facebook feature where you could actually share pictures. Maybe to and and, you know, yeah, to an extent, share pictures or something like that. I mean, it would be nice because then I could say build a model and show me the picture and then you could do that. But 
on YouTube it's video to video so show me the video and uh, I'd be interested to see how you got that problem because I didn't like a bunch of times I tried this a bunch of times and I don't have that that the interior is moving backward or something like that yeah the gap between the windshield and the dashboard is crappy um, but remember that the glass is a thickness and sometimes those thicknesses can't really be compensated for in a good way in some kits they are in some of the newer AMT kits like for instance there and I'm talking like the ones that were made in the later 90s before RC2 bought them before round two did so like the um, the uh, 1958 Plymouth Fury the Christine car that's from that era some of them actually had a recessed area in here or like Mobius Monarch some of those guys they have a recessed area so the glass actually pops into the recess and then it comes up flush so there's no like little step or anything here that causes that gap between the dashboard and the front windscreen um, but this kit is before that so yeah there's gonna always be just that slight gap in there but you know I mean you can't do anything about that. that's 1968 tooling guys <laughs> but at any rate that that wasn't the issue the issue was if this slid back would it affect the interior and the answer from my end is no but uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments and again thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video